Hello and welcome. Now for the whole of 2020, I am doing a no buy slash low buy. This is my update for October. You probably already know the drill by now, but if you don't, we're gonna talk about how much I made, how much I spent and what were the categories I did my spending in, how much I was able to save. I'm also gonna share with you all the new things I have brought into my life. I have a few hand-me-down items as well as some things I purchased myself. And I'm also gonna share with you the products I have used up. And I am so proud of myself for the month of October. I feel like this is the first month where I really, really stuck to my like no buy low buy rules and I also hit some pretty good savings goals so yeah it just seems the more I do this the more natural it becomes to be on a challenge of this kind and yeah I'm really 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 loving it so let's jump in I've got the items I have used up there's four of them first is this deodorant um yeah I've been trying to use it up for like over a year now and it's finally done and I have one that's a bit more natural and it's in glass packaging that I will be swapping to so I'll be recycling that. I have this which is an empty bottle of what was rose hip oil. I use that as my daily moisturizer on my face and I also use it to put it on like my hip area as also and also my thighs where I have a few stretch marks because rosehip oil is really good for scar tissue and like minimizing the effects of the scars so been using that up which is why I've gotten through that bottle um, and then I have my empty toothpaste this is in aluminium packaging so it can actually be recycled and last but not least I have this humongous bottle of conditioner this was actually already in my house and I just decided to use it up instead of buying a new one and it's taken me a very long time to get through probably about this much of it because it's a humongous bottle um, but yeah it is now finished and we'll be going to the recycling um, the next is the two hand-me-down items I have this month. So first is this t-shirt. It's from an artist that I really like and my friend gave it to me. She just doesn't really wear it so she gave it to me and actually we got this t-shirt or she purchased this t-shirt with me at the same time when we were at a music festival in January at the beginning of this year and it's insane to think that we were at music festivals at the beginning of this year. Like the world has changed so much and it feels like two or three years ago, but no, it was only in January. So I got this t-shirt, which I use as like a comfy sleepy top. Um, I also have this hair tonic stuff that a friend had a bunch of bottles of, so I thought I'd give it a shot. It doesn't really do a lot. Like it makes my hair a bit silkier, a bit softer, but it's not really worth it. And I'm only really using it because I didn't pay for it. Cause I think this is usually like 20 something dollars at the supermarket. So those are the two things I got now for the stuff that I purchased myself. First, I have some camera film. Um, I do photography every now and again and I did a photo shoot for a friend's lingerie company and they wanted some film photography and I love photographing in film as well. So I picked up a few rolls. I used up one roll for that shoot, but I still have two more left. Um, but yeah, I don't really count this as a thing because it's not something that I'm physically owning because it like captures memories and then I don't really have the film anymore. I just have like the digital scanned in things. So I don't know. I didn't feel like I broke my low buy, no buy rules with this at all. Um, the next thing that I got is probably my, one of my favorite things that I did this month. And that is I got my watch fixed. So ages ago, the battery died in it and then I just stopped wearing it and forgot to like get the battery changed because like you don't rely on a watch so much when you have um, a phone that can obviously like tell the time as well. However, I do really love it. I think it's a very beautiful accessory. And so this month I finally went and got the battery replaced and also the band had gotten really gross and like started cracking and falling apart. So I got a new band and it was $50. I just went to my local um, watch repair place and they did it in like 15 minutes. It was amazing. And I know I probably could have bought another watch for the like price of $50. However, I'd much rather invest in something I already have and it's like, something I already owned but it's brand new and like had a fresh coat of paint and I really really love it and I've really been enjoying it and feeling fancy and adulty whilst I have my watch and I do use it a lot actually when I'm at work but I just don't it's not a hundred percent a need but I do really appreciate it and love it the next thing I got was some sunscreen because summer is coming here in Australia and it can be really quite deadly I have very pale skin um so this was an essential and this brand is really good because they have a return program with their plastic bottles and they also use um, lesser chemicals than like the average supermarket sunscreen. So I picked that up. A replacement for my toothpaste and I also picked up um, a toothbrush which my one that I'm using at the moment can last me a bit longer but I was in the store so I just picked this up anyway. Picked this up anyway. Yeah. So I have an extra toothbrush. Another thing I got is this, which is some avocado oil. This is what I use as my 
moisturizer on my body. I still have some left in the bottle I already have. However, this was on sale, and so I saved like $5 by buying it this now instead of buying it when I actually need it, so I decided to get it now. Um, so yeah, those are like the toiletry things. Uh, and the last items I have are here. So these are reusable menstrual pads. I actually picked these up because of recommendations in the comments in one of my other videos, and people have really been recommending this company and this product. So I tried out one earlier in the year. I really liked it, so I decided to pick up two more. And yeah huge fan so far and I'm excited to have a few more to have on the go. I was previously using the Thinks Period underwear however just not a fan of like the lifespan of that product considering the price point whereas these um, have a much longer lifespan and do last a lot longer so very happy about those. So that is all the things now let's obviously talk about the finances side of things. Um, and yeah, I'm really, really enjoying doing this challenge. I'm excited for 2021. I've already consolidated and worked out what my rules I want to do for the coming year. So I will share a video on that to maybe give you some ideas of what you might want to do. And if you're like interested in joining the challenge as well. Um, so let's talk about the money. Um, for the month of October, I made a total of $9,668.32. So I had another really high um, income earning month. I mean, to be fair, I'm earning quite a lot throughout every month this year. Yeah, it kind of blows my mind away every time I see how much I make because it, yeah, it, it, in some ways it doesn't feel real to make that much money because only, yeah, like a year ago I was working in a restaurant where I'd make like $250 for the whole week and now I make more like $1,000 and $250 a week. Um, the total of how much I spent was $1,629.97, so that gives me a grand savings of $8,038.35. So yeah, my outgoings is a lot less than my income, that's because I'm consciously obviously trying to save. I'm also very fortunate that the place where I'm staying is my childhood home, so I'm paying only $100 a week to stay here, instead of like what most people would be paying for um, normal rent prices. So let's break down... Um, all the categories where I spent my money. The first is gas for $176.05, so that's pretty normal, like give or take. Groceries, I spent $191.72. This is sort of perfect for me in terms of groceries. I try to spend about $50 a week, um, and that seems to suit me really well. The next is eating out with friends. I spent a total of $215.15, which yeah, I, I keep telling myself off when I eat out with friends and like I should try and bring it down more. However, like people have said, like at this moment there's not a lot you can do in terms of experiences and I have been using eating out with my friends as sort of like my experiences and like going out and... I don't know, having a nice time socializing. The next is things. I spent a total of $192.68. So this was $53. These were $47 this was 28 and this was 40 so these were like the main most expensive items and it all kind of like adds up you know when you buy a few things in that price range the next was my cat i spent 41 dollars on her food and on her litter bills i spent 495 dollars so internet rent and my phone Gifts slash, slash experiences. Now, I didn't spend anything on experiences because, like I said, like eating out with friends has kind of been my main focus for experiences at the moment. But I did spend $150 on one gift. One of my closest friends, you would have seen her actually in my transition back to sleeping on the floor video, my probably most recent one that I just put up. Um, her little sister does ballet, and I sort of just made a commitment to always buy her new point shoes when she needs them. It's just sort of like a nice way to like support her and encourage her to do something that she's really passionate about and also really good at. Um, so whenever her point shoes need to be replaced, I just pay for them and that's just like a small contribution that I do. I think this is like my second or third pair that I have um, helped her with. The next is miscellaneous. I spent a total of 200 and $28.09. Most of that was on physio and then about $8 was on laundry stripping ingredients because I watched Small Decisions video where she did the laundry stripping. It was super satisfying. I did it myself. I'll put some before and after 
photos up on the screen but my god it was very very satisfying doing that and definitely worth the eight dollars the next was eating out with my client i spent a total of forty dollars and twenty cents usually i try and always bring my own food but sometimes when i'm out with a client they want to sit down at a restaurant i'm not going to like eat my takeaway container so i always get something just so it feels like a nice social thing that we're doing together um so yeah that is all my expenses that's everything that i have saved so in terms of my savings goal I have now hit $50,000 saved for this year. So technically when I talk about my income, I talk about it in gross and I don't take out the fact that I have to pay taxes out of that. So I've probably got about $52,000 saved. However, I do need to take a big chunk out of that for this half of the financial year in taxes. So definitely by next month, I will have covered whatever I make next month will probably cover all the taxes I have to pay for this half of the financial year. So it means that like unless I lose all my work um, for next next month then I have like fully hit my savings goal which is awesome and I'm so so happy and excited about that and people often ask me like what I want to do with that money. I am trying to learn about investing and how to appropriately invest. I feel a bit iffy with the stock exchange in regards to like I only want to invest in things that I morally feel like is appropriate so I don't just want to invest into stocks and like the top 100 companies in America and things like that because I don't actually believe in the way that they make money is kind to the environment is kind to other people so I'm trying to figure out how do I invest and invest in an appropriate way that I feel like aligns up with my values and my morals so I'm working on it I would like to invest I also potentially would like to get a home one day however I don't feel like I want to make that commitment because for example if I had someone renting in that house that would be great they could help pay the mortgage but if I couldn't have someone renting and I personally couldn't cover the cost of my mortgage then I wouldn't feel comfortable and right now I'm looking at hopefully going to do more volunteering in the coming year um, in 2021 so if I go back to volunteering I won't be making any income so I wouldn't be able to cover those costs so I'm thinking about it I'm looking at it if you have any suggestions like down in the comments where you've maybe learned about investing or how to do it in an ethical way I'd really appreciate it because I'm I'm yeah there's not a lot out there I'm trying to figure it out I'm slowly making my way um, up to like putting my big adult pants on and trying to work all that out so anyway thank you so much for watching I hope that you're doing well and yeah I will see you next time bye